the Holy Face Devotion, your Apostolate of Reparation, and today's two teachers. Every single person has an Apostolate of Reparation. Join our Redeemer before the devotion to His Holy Face. Discover and then keep rediscovering yours and unify it with Christ's mission. Tonight, Jesus appears to you during His Sacred Passion and His Holy Face is bleeding profusely the most ever. Jesus, why are you appearing this way? The Lord's lessons continue, and this time he is accompanied by another teacher. How well do you know her? Anyone who thinks that profoundly Catholic mysticism is a thing of the past hasn't seen anything, not yet. That night, before the devotion to the holy face of Jesus, Jesus appears to you during his sacred passion. His holy face is bleeding profusely, the most ever. What a sight. His adorable blood is running down his holy face in streams. That precious blood is joined by blood flowing from the wounds caused by the crown of thorns. The thorns not only punctured the top of his sacred head, but shredded it as the crown moved during his suffering. Christ, our King, and the Prince of Peace, appears not only catastrophically wounded and mistreated, but also incredibly rejected. Jesus, why are you appearing this way? Prior to Holy Mass, today's offering to God is made as usual. The Lord has his useless, worthless, and faithless beggar of souls ask him to provide humanity with all the graces it has forfeited because of its arrogance and ignorance, and so you do as he has requested. Holy Mass The Holy Mass on this Friday is so quiet and peaceful. You are sleepy. Your heart is joyful. Jesus, what is it I can do for you? The Consecration Jesus, our Carpenter King, presents himself in a carpenter's shop at the Last Supper, in a stable on Calvary, and is so incredibly rejected. He stands before all, having been scourged at the pillar, crowned with thorns, and wears a mock robe. Our defiled, rejected, and mocked King is at work in the shop at a table, and is restoring his desecrated Catholic Church his desecrated sacred priesthood, and his desecrated people. Jesus presents the work of reparation to his holy face, a favored tool by mystically revealing himself in general and his holy face in particular as an infant in the stable, having just come into the world he created for us, already suffering and lying on the floor, making reparation. Jesus also presents himself at the Last Supper and at the same time during his sacred passion and as he hangs crucified on the cross on Calvary. Jesus stands before all and gives himself to all in the sacred host and chalice filled with an ocean of mercy, his precious blood. Our Redeemer is in particular bleeding from his eyes as he looks at each one of us personally with great love and mercy. O bleeding face, O face divine, be every adoration thine. You then are presented the congregation all around you and experience God's perception of knowing all about all. My children, we are in reality only what we are in the eyes of God and nothing more. St. John Vianney God knows everything. Nothing is hidden from our Creator and Redeemer, and we are to go to Him for all it is that we need. Truly, we are loved and valued by God beyond measure. Holy Communion, you kneel to receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, the great sacrament of sacrificial love, but He is presented to you far too quickly before you have a chance to kneel down. We must keep these moments very reverent and take the time to honor God correctly at the moment when we are unified 
with our Lord. Catholics are way too busy and far too noisy. Fortunately, the celebrant provides an adequate time of silence after all the communicants have received our Lord, and thus he can be properly adored. This sets such a proper and powerful example of what is taking place, divine union and creation with God. You are inspired to present Jesus with all of your burdens. He accepts them and carries them for you on his back. The sacrificial love expressed by the Divine Bridegroom of every soul inspires you to say to our Carpenter King, let me help you carry the cross. Every single person has an apostolate of reparation. Every single person is to unify that mission with Christ's redemptive mission for the greater honor and glory of God and the sanctification and eternal salvation of all. Remain. You remain in church after Holy Mass concludes during Eucharistic adoration to make a proper thanksgiving to God during the sacred 15 minutes of union with our Lord, who is so often left alone and is so often pitifully rejected. Why don't we listen to you, Jesus, and do what you say when you have proven how much you love us and value us? Why? Won't we listen? Jesus, they won't listen. Oh, let us come, remain, and properly adore him, Christ our Lord. Every single person has an apostolate of reparation. Discover, and then keep rediscovering yours. Join our Carpenter King in his magnificent cathedral and help him restore it. Once again, the devil is waiting for you to exit the church. Overnight and the next morning, the devil is once again allowed to be your companion through the night, after having taunted you with the truth over and over and over throughout the afternoon and evening. They won't listen. The king of darkness has his favorite ways of tormenting you. He likes to present your assignments from the Lord and go through them one at a time to show you what is wrong with them. He rewrites things and presents them to you as if you had written them that way. Patiently, while so impatient with the many things that you do in the Lord's service, and so aggravated that he can't get you to surrender to him, having already surrendered to Jesus. With so many Catholics serving themselves for all the wrong reasons, in God's most holy name, the devil sets his sights on those who behave correctly because he knows God and his Most Holy Mother are using these people as tremendous channels of superabundant amounts of grace for the sanctification and eternal salvation of many. Lucifer also presents more vulgar imagery, bombarding you with suggestions of sexual immorality and lewd images as he mocks you over and over are among his favorite weapons in his war against the virtue of chastity, which ransoms a great many people who are enslaved by such sins against self-control, self-mastery, and the great God-given dignity of the human person. Impurity, as seen through the eyes of the devil, is absolutely filthy. He wants us all defiled and desecrated, and he has us begin our soul's descent into hell with defiling and desecrating the real presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. When we do that, then the defiling and desecrating of anyone and anything else is sure to follow. Take a good look around. Hasn't this already happened almost everywhere, having started right inside Christ's own Catholic churches with us attacking Christ's real presence in the Blessed Sacrament, the Sacrament of Sacrificial Love? then don't we claim to love God so much. The devil shifts strategies and presents you with one roadblock after another. This is one of his favorite strategies. He wanted you to give up your mission before you even knew you had one. For so many years, the Lord let him relentlessly harass you. He was allowed to place one roadblock after another in your path while mocking you in the process. 
day and night. Tonight, however, you see that each roadblock, and sometimes all the roadblocks that the devil piled up, one after another, are removed, and you are clear to proceed in Christ's peace. Jesus, you tell him, it seems like I am constantly climbing a mountain. Our Savior replies, I can move mountains. Lord, you are always faithful to your promises. Thy will be done. Always remember that God allows evil and that he has a plan for each one of us that is good. He conquers evil by transforming all into great good. May we trust in him always and do what he says. Almighty God, our Father, then has you suffer throughout the morning in union with Christ crucified during his execution for our redemption. When you are allowed to move, the entire morning has been sacrificed. This you accept, but not so easily today. Upon arising, two teachers and a powerful lesson. While getting ready in the Lord's white and gold room, you are shown the following. Blessed Mother is on Calvary, and she is holding the absolutely desecrated, disfigured, bloody, and dead sacred body of her divine son after he has been removed from the cross. His most holy face is disfigured beyond recognition. What a moment shared with both mother and son. It is absolutely unspeakable. The devotion to the holy face of Jesus is again presented to you as an incredibly powerful weapon of mass salvation provided to us by Almighty God. This devotion surpasses all other devotions. It is actually three Christocentric devotions in one, the devotion to the Holy Face of Jesus, the Divine Mercy devotion, and the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Pair these devotions, which are combined into one, with the Lord's work of reparation, and we can see why the demons are so angry. Many, many souls will be saved through the Lord's work of reparation to the holy face of Jesus. You share a moment with Blessed Mother, the Mediatrix of all graces, as she holds her son in her arms, the one who suffered all and gave up all for us. You see, she is holding Jesus, and at the same time, through him, also holds the cross he carried as he made reparation for all of our sins. What a sight! The Blessed Mother holds the sacred body of her son as she had when she carried him within her womb and when he was little, and she also holds the cross that he carried. This is metaphorical for all Jesus suffered throughout his life in reparation for our sins, and also for all he suffered by willingly embracing the cross he carried, was nailed to, and was executed on. As the Blessed Mother holds Jesus, she holds also his mystical body. And as she holds the cross through which he unified himself with our sins to redeem all, she is also holding us. God's Most Holy Mother is holding us twice. She holds the mission of her Divine Son to save us, through which her fiat her yes to God became her mission also. She also holds our missions, and both mother and son are here to help us fulfill them. They remain faithful, and they will never fail us. Not only will they never fail us, they remain among us and are always here to help us when we fail them. They don't leave when things seem hopeless. Because with God, there is always hope. The Blessed Mother then tells you that this is what every Catholic must do also. We must live in imitation of Christ and God's Most Holy Mother and unconditionally surrender to the perfect will of God. In particular, we are to remain in or return to our parishes and Christ's sacraments and carry our crosses there valiantly and with great love as they did, among so much human degradation 
for the sanctification and eternal salvation of all. We are being summoned, led, encouraged, properly taught, and strengthened by God and His Most Holy Mother as our Carpenter King, our High Priest, and the Head of the Catholic Church restores His desecrated Bride, His desecrated Sacred Priesthood, and His desecrated people in our time with His very own Sacred Body through His instruments that make up His mystical body through each one of us using His favorite tools Eucharistic Adoration, the work of reparation to His Holy Face, and proper Catholic education. The Morning Offering It is not the sinner who returns to God to ask for forgiveness. It is God who runs after the sinner and makes him return to Him. St. John Vianney As you pray before the devotion to the Holy Face of Jesus in your home, and begin the day by offering all to God while adoring Him. You are suddenly taken into the black abyss, where many souls are being held in spiritual captivity, in darkness, where the devil works tirelessly to get them to remain until the time comes when their souls are called by God into eternity, at which time the devil intends to take their souls with him to hell and for good. You find yourself kneeling before the devotion in the black abyss that is devoid of Christ's light, and at the same time find yourself praying in the Garden of Gethsemane inside of a small and very ornate mystical cathedral made of wood, made of reparation, made of crosses. You pray with Jesus to Almighty God our Father for the strength to accomplish the mission He has for you and also pray for the sanctification and eternal salvation of the entire human race. Suddenly, you see that mystically present with you there are the occupants of heaven, the sacramental confession of adoration, reparation, and restoration is to be made today. Our Lord floods your heart and soul with the most beautiful sentiments in that regard. Almighty God, our Father, Holy Spirit, and Jesus, our Carpenter King, your wish is my command. Trust all things to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and to Mary, help of Christians, and you will see what miracles are. Saint John Bosco To learn more about the vital work of reparation to the holy face of Jesus, which was given to us by our Savior personally, who called it the most beautiful work under the sun. Visit www.josephcarlpublishing.com Jesus said to Sister Mary of St. Peter, By my holy face you will work wonders, and he still means it. <laughs>